All right, so we're getting to the main event now, and I'm going to ask um, Jade to um, open her camera so that we can welcome her and her amazing presentation. So I'll wait for uh, a minute just to let her open her camera so we can properly welcome her to the IDM. There we are. Nihal, thank you so much. Shishit. So this is session four, and we're very excited to welcome Jade Cheng Jin. Jade Cheng Jin taught midwifery at Wenzhou Medical University from 2007 to 2019 as the director of the midwifery program. Following a year at Yale studying direct entry midwifery, she designed and facilitated the establishment of China's first undergraduate midwifery program at Wenzhou Medical University. Jade is also the leader of the Angel of Life for Africa training program, which brings together NGOs in Ghana and Tanzania to provide training program for midwife's assistants and a model for integrating civil cooperation medical professional technical support and enterprise participation. Prior to starting her doctoral studies, Jade's work mainly focused on curriculum development and promotion of higher education in midwifery in China. She is currently completing her PhD studies at Zhejiang University. Her research focuses on perinatal loss and cross-cultural comparisons of support following perinatal loss. Thank you so much. We are so honored to welcome you to the conference. Take it away and I'll hand you over the presenter rights. Okay. Good morning and good evening, everyone. My name is Chang Zhen, and from Zhejiang University of China. I would like to say a thank you to Professor Seo Javid for inviting me, and thank you, Dr. Jen Houston, for helping me this presentation here. Um, I will share my research, the role of culture and spirituality in post stillbirth grave healing of a brave mother in China. It is a qualitative research. As I know, I am the first person from China to give the presentation in this conference. Before I start the topic, I'd like to give you a brief introduce to the Chinese midwifery. Just to uh, give you an idea, China has a population of over 1.4 million people. Yes, the unit is, is, is billion. Yeah, it's a huge number of the population. In 2022, we had 9.56 million births. It made 2022 the first year with negative population growth in China. Right now, China are facing a big challenge. The younger generation don't want to get married or have kids. So the government has came out a branch of policy to encourage having children. Um, one such policy is improving the education level of midwives. Uh, let me share a little bit about the midwife in China. Now, China has 183,000 midwives, but we also need about 200,000 more. Just like many countries, we need more midwives. This graph shows the number of midwives per 10,000 population and the least red color is China here. Has only um, four midwives for every 10,000 people. It's so small amount. 
you might already know about the one child policy in China. It's from the 80s. But the practice of midwifery in China was actually stopped in 1960s. So Chen nurses and obstetrician took over the job of delivery baby. So when the government saw that the birth rate was dropping and the one child policy was causing many social problems, problems, they brought in the two child policy in 2015. This causes a high peak in birth over two years period. It took over 40 years. It, it took over 50 years in 2017. Undergraduate midwifery program finally made a comeback in China. My university, the Benjo Medical University, being one of the, the, the first group re-established this program. It is so lucky. But now, birth rate in China was dropping continuously, and then the set child policy where has emerged, but introduced in 2021. Midwifery, uh, midwifery in China has been growing super fast. Uh, even though we still use the nurse midwife model, in China, universities are now enrolling students in legally recognized midwifery programs. There's still some work to do in improving midwifery education. We, start, we started to join the role to support early practice for midwives. And I'm very uh, sure that midwifery in China is going to get better and better. So now, um, let's get back to my presentation today. According to the uh, what organize what health organization, there are nearly two million stillbirths each year. In twenty nineteen, the stillbirth rate in China was about five uh, five point fifty four per one thousand total births. Stillbirth is a heartbreaking and life-changing event. It made the one of the most emotionally challenged grave experience. So that is shoulder uh that is show the international uh, stillbirth rate. Different cultural contexts might lead to different experience of stillbirth. Uh, right now, most of the grave care studies in medical literature came from Western and high-income countries. There are not much data available from Asian. So in the Chinese cultural context, post stillbirth grave experience by mother may differ from the Western culture which exempt in the dominant in research. So the aim of my study is to explore the law of culture and the spirituality in the grave among Chinese mothers following a stillbirth. The method we took uh, We took a constructionist approach and conducted a qualitative study using in-depth interview. A total of 28 mothers who had experienced a stillbirth within the past year were interviewed by our trained interviewers. Then the researcher performed an inductive semantic analysis on the transcripts. The themes were identified. We carry out this study at a provincial public hospital. This hospital is in a modern city in Hangzhou with a diverse 
population, including migrants from different regions of China. The hospital is the largest maternal and child health facility in the province. In 2020, in 2020 the hospital has avenue has avenue um, delivery volume over 20,000 babies. We gathered our participants for October 2020 to May 2021. This is the inclusion and the exclusion criteria as follows. We use a purposeful, uh, we use a purposeful sampling to include women of different ages, education levels, gestational age, religion beliefs, and their previous brief briefment experience. We stopped recruiting when we reached a saturation for this scene. After identity led cases through the hospital information system, we expand the purpose and the significance over the form, often informed consent, consent by taking into account the respondent's preference. Then we add the WeChat link. You know, in China, uh, we always use WeChat. Uh, it's like using the phone, so we always use a view chat, we, uh, we chat to connect other people. Discussed, uh, and then we discussed appropriate location with the, with the mothers for in-person interview or online interviews through WeChat. <clears throat> Less five participants choose in-person interview and uh, 23 choose online interview. There are 33 interviews was conducted in the study and the in-person interviews were conducted with the COVID precaution in place. Before the interviews, demographic data were collected. The recording was transcribed into a word script. Transcription has done word by word and the sentence by sentence demographic information of participants entered into the data sheet and sought to Excel. Patient re related data were de identified and crept and kept by the researchers. We used the iFried tech software and the NVivo 12 to aid with the study the data were analysis through the brown o'clock uh, semantic analysis. This is the demographic, uh, demographic information table. We collect the religion, gestational weeks, and the previous brief experiment for the study and the, the figure shows the main scene in findings. The major scene is cultural impact on grave expression, cultural characteristic, characteristic of experience and their significance in cultural and spiritual healing behavior. And that is the sub -scenes. In these signs, I showed all of the main scenes and sub -scenes and the some codes from the mothers. But due to the time constraints, I won't cover all the scenes, but I will, I will provide a few examples. I will introduce some sub-scenes. 
the restrained expression of grief. Um, some patients, uh, some some participants indicated that they were pursued to accept the view that the expression of stillbirth grief could be harmful to the health of their lost babies, their family, or themselves. They reported their families used a taboo customer as a reason to discourage them from expression their thought and feeling. This subsim showed the silent grave. Uh, the silent grave is a common phenomenon in many cultures. So I don't want to explain more about this thing. And another thing I would like to discuss most is the unattainable mourning, uh, mourning ceremonies. In our study, the hospital typically handled the disposal of babies remains only to mothers asked to take their babies home, but no one actually did. This was because participants were unsure how to handle the remains and believe it was cultural, culturally taboo. They felt that a funeral after stillbirth might not be appropriate, so they left the baby's body at the hospital to avoid cultural taboos. The practice recommended in Western Bremen care guideline, like holding a federal as a measure of post steel birth healing, does not appear to be achieved for Chinese mothers. Another thing I would like to talk is hospital policy as barrier. All mothers complained, or mother, yeah, complained about the hospital did not have a policy to allocate separate rooms or space for women after stillbirth. They shared a room with the mother who have live babies. This made so difficult to express their grief or discuss their loss that become an additional burial to graving. And I will introduce other oriented self. Some mothers, they were more concerned with other husband, with their husbands or family members feeling than their own. They were afraid that expressing their grief would trouble others with an unnecessary emotional burden and a negative feeling. They preferred to hide their emotion and pretend that the loss did not affect them too much, or they had already moved on. This phenomenon known as the other oriental self, it is a very common phenomenon in China culture. Yeah. And uh, I will introduce the I will introduce that culture is a Kong Yue. Kong Yue is a is a very special uh, it's a very special phenomenon in China because in China we have a we we have a um, a time we caught compliment we caught compliment uh, following a stillbirth participants use the um, term Kong Yue Kong is means empty in Chinese and it symbolized not only the loss of the baby, but also the served connection between the mother and her baby. Um, in China, the postpartum co confinement period, uh, we always see the sitting months. Uh, in Chinese pronunciation is zhuo yue. Uh, during 
this period, the new mother will stay at home for 30 to 42 days after giving birth. And they have a lot of the uh, restriction for the, for the uh, behavior, like shut the window, can't open a door, can't uh, take a shower, can't eat the cold food like this. And the, the mother think the confinement, the, the yes, is not suitable for the mother without a live baby. So they felt excluded from this experience, which suggests their grief and their sadness. Another tab. Another thing is a cultural taboo on dealing with the deceased baby position, position. Some, some stillborn babies belonging is a taboo when the mothers viewed this item as a lucky and unlucky and felt that grieving, uh, giving them to other expectant mothers could bring misfortune. As a result, they choose to dispose of all destroyed this item instead of passing them on to others or donating them. Under the under this scene, the significant Yeah, I would introduce that thing seeking the meaning of the event. This, these four things is more cultural and spirituality uh, related with the with the behavior of the mothers. Some mothers shared, some mothers shared. Uh, that they just can't stop thinking about the event. About the event and this mind constantly return to pain. They've induced, they've endured, and they've tend to deep reflection try to find a meaning and a significance in what has happened. Throughout this process, they've identified the spiritual as a key factor in helping them seek answers, when other ways haven't provided them with the closure they need. They believe that spiritual spirituality might offer the ultimate answer to their profound loss. And another important sub thing is accepting and reconciling with the, with the event. Some of the mother believe that their own habits or their behavior might have directly or indirectly led the, the, the stillbirths, or that they didn't recognize warning signs in time to save the baby, to deal with the guilt, uh, to deal with the guilty, some mothers have tended to spiritual practice as the way to let go of their feeling of brain and focus on positive actions for a better outcome. In context of the Chinese spiritual, they attribute the cause to fate, which is believed to be predetermined by a higher power and cannot be changed. Moreover, they also express spiritual, spiritual, spiritual concepts like recognition, recognition, giving them hope that the babies might return to this world, this world, and be reborn into a better family. This helps them accept 
reconcile with their boss, ultimately find the peace. Some participants some participant who were previously assist in the region found themselves turning to religion after their loss. They studied performing good deeds, hoping to gain merit and a virtue for a better future. They also do, they also delved into philosophical and religion books, exploring concept concepts of life and death, and found comfort through spiritual activities. This do, this demonstrates how a serious experience can strengthen one's spiritual or religion space. On the other hand, some mothers who were already religions before the laws became skept uh, skeptical of their faith. They feel betrayed after engaging in faith-related activities during pregnancy, like praying for a health child, but only to experience the opposite outcome. This lead to a, de a decline in their confidence in their faith. It's discussion, so that's a long correct. This study is one of the few that describes the influence of Ch of China of Chinese culture on grave expression expression, as well as the law of Chinese culture and the spirituality in women's post loss healing after a stillbirth. The study showed that some customers social norms, um, politics, uh, the policy and the rules and the spiritual of the fate, life or death, might contribute to the pathways to adapt to bravement in Chinese society. Some cultural practice facilitated this connection and the detachment from their stillborn babies and their invent, influenced by Chinese belief about life or death. Some mothers believed that detaching from the negative past could lead to a positive future. Additionally, traditional belief detected that a deceased baby could only recognize if I'm bound by its previous, uh, previous family. The study highlights the influence of medical culture policies and their interaction between brain matters and their healthcare provider in China on post stillbirth grave experience. The spiritual uh, pathway is a multi multifaceted aspect of grave coping with both supportive and challenge effect on brain matters. And conclusion, summarize Chinese culture and spiritual has various influence in brave mothers, grave expression, and the post stillbirth healing process. This research demonstrated some specific aspect of uh, spirituality that contribute or hide to the grieving process and the different roles of Chinese culture and spiritual spirituality in individuals. It could develop the culturally sensitive, uh, sensitive interventions and the support systems, assisting mothers in navigating grief and healing. Future Long to, uh, future longitudinal stu studies could be undertaken, undertaken to explore in deeper influence of Chinese culture and spirituality over time in the different stage of grave healing after stillbirth.
and uh, this study may help healthcare workers and uh, break mother with stillbirth not only in China but also in country with Chinese migrants to understand stillbirth healing behaviors and uh, provide different perspectives on life and thus view and the values as well as different behavior and thought orientals or, or, or orientation when coping with stillbirth in cultural contexts other than Western world. So that's all for my presentation. Thank you for your attention. And do you have any questions? I'm very happy to answer the questions. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Jade. That was very moving and a fantastic presentation. Um, and Dr. Jevitt in the chat says, can you tell us if you've tried an educational program for midwives to give women time to see the baby after stillbirth? Did you get that question now, from yeah. me? Yeah. Uh, now, uh, in our research group, we have another group to uh, to to establish the education for the for the nurse and midwives, and uh, uh, because in China, our nurse and midwives they do not have a, a awareness to to give. Uh, Give suggestion to the uh, to the mothers to to see the baby or hold the baby. So uh, we need to educate them and have a uh, and have Chen them to give the opportunity to the mothers could to see baby or holding the baby. And I think the mother they um they have a they have a right. And uh, our midwives have a responsibility, uh, both to give their give their um, opportunity to choose, yeah, if, if they want to see or if they want to hold the babies. Uh, but now, in my research, when I ask the mother if they want to see or hold the baby, um, until now, uh, in my research. Most of mother they don't want to, they don't want to hold or they don't want to see, and there are some of them they 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 do not have a, they they don't know if they could see or they could hold, so uh, maybe in the future uh, we we could do some research for for about that, yeah. Thank you. And then just to read two comments to you, um, one from uh, Celine says, this is surely important and it's so heartbreaking for the lived experience of these women. And then these customs are so different from what we were taught 40 years ago in the United States. This is important for all of us to know when we're caring for families from China. And then uh, another question in the chat, is there a taboo for nurses and midwives to help the mother with the baby that has died? So is there any kind of cultural things that we should really be aware of, like in, if we're helping um, bereaved families, if you could respond? Sorry. Can you repeat the questions? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. So Dr. Jevitt said, is it taboo? Like, is it is it not a good thing uh, for nurses and midwives? Should, like, what are your suggestions? Should they try and help? Is there, is there like, a cultural uh, issue if nurses and midwives are trying to help the mother with the baby uh, that has died? For, for the nurses and midwives, like, how how is that? viewed in, in Chinese culture. Is it unlucky? So is she saying, is it unlucky for nurses and midwife to help mother when they've had a stillbirth? Yeah, 
you mean the uh yeah some um um some nurse and midwives um might be not think it's unlucky um but um like might be uh some some nurse and midwives but when they face that situation uh because uh they do not get a training for for this kind of um field and they don't they don't know how to deal with that uh, situation and sometimes they they cope with that uh cope with stillbirths according by themselves like uh they they read the article literature from the western uh, countries um, and uh, sometimes they they are um, decided by themselves and uh, i invite i i also invited some midwives in china and uh, uh, the younger midwives they said they don't know because because they do uh, like some midwives it, it, because they're too young they do not have their their own children they do not have their own kid so they don't know how to uh, deal with that situation some uh, most of the time they escaped yeah they say nothing for the um for the uh, women with stillbirths and they escaped that kind of uh, situation and uh, they they might be hurt and also um my students my students when when they have practice in the uh, in the hospital they also face um, that situation with stillbirths and the, they have some trauma for that but in china now we do not have any um any knowledge in the test book and there uh, no any uh, training program for that how to deal with the stillbirths so i think we, we need to do much for that part and then we've got a comment a couple of comments um uh yan wong says i think there's no taboo in china but some oh. nurses may or midwives may think this is not lucky uh shari says learning about bad luck uh, of keeping or passing on the possessions was great to learn and says great findings what is the way forward to help these women and then seal says secondary trauma for nurses and midwives who haven't been given information to help the mother so um we can probably just if you want to um maybe give us a little summary and then we'll start to close the session jade great session i saw one young young one said I think less has no taboo. I I I think uh I'm I'm confirmed. Um, uh, maybe her meaning is no taboo in hospital, but it's it's taboo in the for the family. Yeah, uh, she's my student. <laughs> yeah, she's working for many years, and there is no taboo. I think it's no taboo in our hospital, but uh, it's also a taboo for the family so i correct it and uh yeah sorry but what your questions again yeah thank you i think it was just talking really about um you know for um folks from different cultures like mm -hmm. you know where i live probably where you live it's very diverse so I think I think that Dr. Jevitt's point was that having this information is really helpful because when you're from a different culture, it can be quite different if people have different beliefs um, about stillbirth. So I think I think that was the main point. Uh, yes, yes, I think. Uh different culture have different outcome and uh, to um, influence different uh, uh, reaction and behavior. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, 
China, China have a lot of uh, the, the the cultures like uh, like Chinese immigrant they living in the Western country. You you could see a lot of cultural from China. So, um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes. So um, for the stillbirths, yes, we also um, have a lot of cultural influence that. And uh, for another part is we, we know, uh, sometimes we know have the have a, uh, like a social norm, uh, 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 um, ordinary social norm for special for the stillbirths. So, that may be uh that may be due to um maybe a result in the mother they do not have a knowledge to know how to deal with that situation because they do not have a rule um based in the uh, chinese traditional um, cultures like how to hold the federal and the if they, they need to uh, get their baby's body back, and uh, um, if they, they need to, um, to, to write the baby's name on the, my, uh, on the tombstone. You know, in China, we have a tombstone, they have uh, some, uh, some offspring's names, but their stillbirth baby, they do not have a name in their in the tombstone, that is the taboo, also in China. Yeah, it's so different. But you've actually, you you know, you've brought us into your culture so so eloquently and beautifully today. And there's there's some wonderful comments. Um, uh, thank you so much, Jade. It's so brave to present the language. That you don't speak every day you've made our our midwifery world a little closer thank you so much for joining today and glad you're representing uh we have four hundred thousand chinese in british columbia and four mandarin speaking midwives celine says very informative and uh, sensitive presentation thank you and yan wong uh, sends roses sends flowers so Thank you so much, Shishia. It was really Thank fantastic you. presentation. Um, so much to learn. As someone that's very has experienced very close uh, perinatal uh, stillbirth loss, um, I, I so appreciate you um, bringing this. Um, and we want to say thank you uh, from the IDM. Uh, so much, and uh, to all of you. And uh, let me put all the links in the chat. Oh, I need to um, if make you a can. selfish. Oh yeah, make picture. the selfie right now. Uh, selfie. Could you, could you move a little bit uh, forward my slide? Oh. I want to take <laughs> a selfie with my slide. All right. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. Oh, here Thank you. All right. 